So um, would you like to tell us a little bit about yourself and, and how you came to kind of programming in R and, or, or data analysis or whatever it is you're, you're doing on a day-to-day -day basis and why you came to Shiny? Um, yeah, sure. Um, so uh, my name is Layla. I am uh, a research analyst at the University of Miami in Florida. Uh, I work for the Miller School of Medicine. Um, I, so I'm an academic opioid uh, um, addiction research two grants that I'm on. Um, I actually got into R out of really just uh, a requirement. I basically got pushed into the deep end. Um, I actually got programmed. <laughs> I, I actually not programmed. I got trained as a SAS programmer. And if you guys know anything about uh, health research, you might know what SAS is or SATA. Um, it is, I mean, I thought it was the bee's knees until I started learning R. After I got after I like you know hit that uh, to the other side of the learning curve of R, it was a much better experience. Like I, I don't even think I could program in SAS anymore, <laughs> <laughs> and that was about three years ago. Um, and then um, yeah, so Shiny came about, which actually is my favorite to be honest topic. Um, just because it's my, I got into it because I wanted to display my results of like analyses that I was doing um, interactively. Um, and so I started to teach myself Shiny um, just with whatever resources were online. And now it's the module of a data science course I teach. So um, it's my, my most favorite because it's kind of like, uh, it's really, it's really fun to show students that like, oh my God, you can build like a web page with R. It's super intimidating at first. And then when I just show them how easy it is, it's very like, um, this is, uh, it's not as hard as you think it is. You don't need to like be a super, uh, a super, you know, nerdy web developer or whatever. <laughs> you don't need to know like excessive, like you don't need to know like JavaScript and stuff like that. Because for me anyways, in my head, when I think of like, you know, developing a web app, it's like, oh my God, I was like, I can't do that. Like, let me just stick to my, my basic um, code. But anyways, so that's why I really like Shiny and that's how I got into it. And now I teach it. And this book club has really helped me strengthen kind of my knowledge. Um, I'll be teaching in a couple of, about three weeks now. So um, this is really kind of strengthening uh, my understanding of Shiny. And if I get stuck, I can always just ping you guys and be like, I don't know what this thing is. So, um, and refer my, refer my students to the um, Mastering Shiny book, which wasn't available um, before. So anyways, all right. So I'm gonna go share my screen. Let's see. All right, so I hope you're looking at um, our studio viewer of the book down. Um, I believe this is out of order. Whatever I, I pulled, um, because I think this is technically chapter 11. Yeah, and yeah, we're it's showing up that it's chapter 10. We're, we're, we're missing a chapter. Yeah. All yeah. oh, right. Right. We are, we are out of order. Okay. All right. So um, I really enjoyed learning this chapter, um, reading through this chapter, because I have always found this part, like I've, I've found, I've always found sharing my apps very annoying because you can't just like, send a link, right? It's, it was, um, was I, I, I didn't know at the time, I didn't know how, um, I didn't think that was possible. It was very inconvenient. You have to like uh, send uh, the link to your app that you've either deployed to a virtual machine or shinyapps.io and then 
um, and then be like, okay, put in these parameters to get these exact results that I'm, I'm showing, that I want you to see. But now you can do this thing called bookmarking, um, which saves the current state of the app and all its inputs. Um, and so it's more easy, like it's easier to share with other people, which is very good. Um, so in this chapter, we're gonna learn how to add a bookmark button to the UI um, using bookmark button, that function. Um, look, learn how to make the UI into a function and understand why that's necessary. And learn how to use um, the enabling bookmarking argument in the Shiny app call um, so that you can put those two pieces together and then have a, an application that can be bookmarked. So to give you a brief introduction, um, this, it's super convenient to be able to send any URL to somebody just like you would in a browser. You just, you know, if you wanna to go to a specific page, your URL has the specific path to wherever like, you know, the, uh, the current page that you're looking at, but those are dynamic. Shiny applications are what are called a single page applications. And they're basically like just an, a website that interact with your, your user dynamically by rewriting the current web page. So every time you change an input, the stuff, whatever you have changes with it. Um, but that was one of the major drawbacks of using Shiny apps is that um, you can't have, you can't, the, the inputs always reset every time you share your URL with somebody. Um, so, but now with bookmarking, this function, the, the functionality of bookmarking, this problem is addressed. So what I'm gonna do with this uh, chapter, there's one of the exercises in, it was exercise one that uh, displays the result of a package called ambient. And the function is noise simplex. Um, it was a package written by Thomas Flynn Pedersen, um, but I don't understand, to be honest. I wrote, uh, I, I wrote the app, but I didn't, I don't really understand noise, to be honest with you, to understand the parameters and what I'm looking at to see if it's cool, if it's fully appreciated. Um, but anyways, I did that um, just so I can show you. Um, all right, so to be able to, un to add bookmarking to your application, like I mentioned previously, there are three main parts. In the UI, you have to make, it a, you have to make your U UI a function and you have to add the bookmark button um, call. So in this uh, code chunk, you can see that the um, UI is now passed the function, just like in the server. The server, normally you have, um, a function assigned to the server, and you usually have like fluid page or something like that assigned to UI. But this time you need to have, uh, the UI has to be a function as well, which I'll talk about in just a second as to why. Um, and then you just add a bookmark button. This literally creates a button, just like you would um, like action button, for example, any one of these um, kind of elements that you add to your Shiny application, um, which stores the state of um, the state of your application. So like an action button would do an action. The um, bookmark button does the same, right? There is a server side um, that captures the state of the application. Um, and then third, third uh, is the Shiny app call itself. So the Shiny app call that puts your UI and your server together, that makes your app um, has uh, an option, an argument to enable bookmarking and the type of bookmarking that you want to enable. And in this case, I'm going to, um, in the example, there is your URL bookmarking, but there are other kinds. Do we need to make Function. 
I'm afraid you've dropped out a little bit, Layla. We've missed the past couple of minutes. To an argument to be able to be able to modify I have. Can you hear me now? Um, just a second. Mic check. Yep. Hello. Yeah, we can hear you now. Can you hear me? Uh, I, it, it's certainly better than it was a couple of minutes ago, yeah. yeah. Me? Um, I cannot hear anything. No. Um, She's gone. Has she? Oh, has she? Uh, oh dear. Uh, she, she, she will be back. There she is. She's going back now. What time is in California? We're in back, guys. Ah, great. Okay, we can see you again. Sorry about that. Yeah. Not hearing. Okay. All right. Sorry about that, guys. <laughs> um, so, as I was saying, I, I don't know how much of it you missed again. Um, so, uh, I was explaining why the UI needs should, should be a uh, function. Um, and I was explaining that because, um, uh, as you would normally write a regular function in R, you would have to pass in some arguments um, uh, which or some parameters into your function so that you can produce some output and you can produce the same output if you pass in the same arguments to a function. It's the same here, right? Shiny needs to be able to modify the input controls. And that information that what inputs need to be modified is stored in uh, the URL. Um, so let's see. So the URL itself is the argument into the UI's function. Um, and that's what's going to return the app to a particular state that you want. And uh, yeah. So secondly, there is the bookmark button. Like I mentioned, this function literally adds a button to the UI that captures the current values of all the input controls and generates a URL. Then finally, we have enable bookmarking um, to the Shiny app call. Russ looks frozen. Am I still speaking? Yes, um, yes, we yeah, can yeah, hear you, Robert Lina. Okay. Okay, okay. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so, um, all right. And then finally, um, adding the enable bookmarking argument to the Shiny app call itself um, puts as you know, the Shiny app call puts the app together. Um, there are different arguments that you can put, there are different options you can put here so that you can actually have a URL or you can have, uh, which is URL encoded versus saved on server. But I'll talk more about this uh, a little bit later. All right. Can I ask, um, can I, am I, yeah. So, uh, there, there was a request argument in that function and it it didn't appear to be used in the body of the UI function there. 
Um, but presumably some data must be passed out of that request to set the initial values for the slider inputs and things like that. I was just wondering whether you knew anything about how the request is handled in this um, um, example here. Right, right. I'm, I noticed that also. Um, I'm wondering if it's uh, one of these, um, what is it called? Um, like almost sort of predefined uh, mm. argument, kind of like session. So session holds a lot of different uh, values like in the server um, yeah. that you can retrieve. Um, but I'm not sure, um, I noticed it, but I honestly t didn't look into it m much yeah. Yeah. Uh, at all actually. Um, but yeah, that's a really good point. Now I'm going to have to look it up. <laughs> I'll look it up and I guess I can uh, put mm -hmm. it in this slot afterward. Um, let's see. All right, so, uh, so some of you may already know this, but a default URL that's generated from within the Shiny app is going to look something like this. So in the book, he had, you know, um, hadley.shinyapps.io. So this is the shinyapps.io account with all of these random words and numbers. Or if you're running your app locally, you're gonna get something like this. Um, but what do they mean? So the first um, HTTP or HTTPS, that's your protocol. Um, and this, what's in between the two uh, slot, um, backslashes, I always get them confused, <laughs> um, is, the location of, of your application. So 127.0.0.1 is, uh, is running locally on your machine, aka local host, um, colon some random number is a, is a random port on your machine that is uh, that Shiny generates. Um, you can actually specify this in the Shiny app call if you want to specify a uh, port number. Um, otherwise, um, it, Shiny will just randomly assign one for you. Um, and then everything following that last slash after the question mark actually are all your parameters. So you say it says inputs, right? So this is telling, this is the part that gets input to the um, DUI. Inputs, and then you have ampersand damping equals 0.997, ampersand delta 1.37. So really this is damping is gonna be set to 0.997, the input. Um, delta is going to be set to 1.37, length is going to be set to 500, and omega is going to be set to negative 0.9. So each of these are separated by an ampersand, and that is your URL. And I'm hoping like you guys are kind of uh, thinking along the lines of, well, that's cool and all if you have like three or four um, arguments, uh, parameters, or inputs in your in your um, application, but oftentimes that's not the case. Um, or maybe just the, these, maybe there are only, there's only an instance where you want to only share three and it doesn't matter the other ones. Uh, but actually that's not even possible. You have, to, it would share all of the, the inputs. Uh, I'll explain in a second, but I, I, I hope you guys are kind of like thinking this through your head because I definitely was when I was reading through this chapter. Um, so uh, let's see. I think at this point, all right, let me let me talk about this really quick and then I'll show you the app um, in R. So the the bookmark button function um, in the UI requires the user to manually click on the button to generate a URL. okay? But it's probably more convenient to have the URL just update itself. Like when have you ever gone to a website and have had to click on a button? So obviously that button is there for a reason, but personally it would be my preference to just have the but to have the URL update itself whenever the user um, updates some inputs. 
obviously this is going to be uh, a little bit more, um, take a little bit more resources because it's going to constantly keep observing these inputs every time they change for just in case this bookmarking, like it needs to be bookmarked. Hence why the button is there. So that maybe it doesn't use as many, um, doesn't use as many resources, right? To it just, click, you can just click on the button and then it'll capture the current state. So it's not constantly observing the state of the application. But if you're more like me and you just want to make things can, more convenient for your user, I would just have um, the URL automatically update. Um, and the way to do this is you essentially uh, store the inputs um, at in, into a list. So you basically, there's the reactive values. So I think that was discussed back in chapter three or four or something like this in reactivity. So there's a option of rea uh, reactive values, that's reactive values to list, which is essentially what you think uh, it does. Essentially, it takes the reactive object input and stores it as a list. It does the same thing as as.list does in, in base R, but for Shiny. And then it takes the session and it observes input and it observes uh, the value of session, uh, session dollars and do bookmarks. Um, so you basically, you wrap that information around an observer like this and then invoke do bookmark, which is a function in session. So it's the session environment, like I was saying earlier, has a bunch of information that is stored. And one of them, there is a, a do bookmark call, which invokes um, on bookmark, which is a callback function. So just FYI, callback functions are functions that can be passed as an argument into another argument, into another function, sorry, functions that can be passed into another function um, to be called back at a later time. Um, it's a little bit confusing. It was a little bit confusing to me at first, which is why I included it here because I didn't really understand this logic, but um, that's essentially what callback does. So it's gonna observe and it's going to say, all right, I'm invoking do bookmark, which is gonna call uh, on bookmark that function at a later time. Um, and what this does is it's just repetitively updating your URL every time the inputs, every time reactive values, this list changes, the URL changes. All right, so now at this point, I'm gonna pause briefly so I can show you the application itself. So if you can see my RCO window right now, just move this over to the side a little bit. So we have the UI and this uh, just two function calls really, I mean, library calls are shiny and then there's the ambient package. Um, and like I mentioned earlier, there is a function, uh, the UI is a function that takes an argument request um, and then, which allows the a user to, um, if I were to share a URL, to pass it, and then that would get passed into um, the Shiny application and modify the input. But this application literally just has a sidebar and a main panel, and in the sidebar there is uh, four um, inputs that need to get modified: the frequency the fractal, the lacunarity, and the gain. Um, and actually, before I move forward, let me just show you uh, a very briefly um, this the ambient package, the simplex noise generator function. Um, for those of you that are curious, uh, these, it takes, really just dimensions the argument and thus are they default to certain um, um, values. Um, so frequency determines, so in the exercise, we were asked to modify the frequency, the fractal, 
the lacunarity, I hope I'm saying that right, and the gain. So frequency determines the granularity of the features in the noise. Fractal is uh, not sure, but <laughs> essentially you just specify what type you want to use, either none, FBM, which is the default billow or rigid multi. Um, you just play around with them and the, the pictures change. Uh, which I guess is kind of interesting. I honestly didn't spend time looking into noise generation and all of these uh, vocabulary. Um, the lacunarity, which is the frequency multiplier between successive noise layers and building fractal noise. And then gain is the relative strength between successive noise layers when building fractal noise. Anyways, so all of this is, doesn't mean so much to me, but in case you guys are <laughs> interested, they're here. Um, oh, and here's some examples. So you just plot it and then you can just see some noise. Okay, so let's go back to the application. So I went ahead and I, um, for these inputs, put in the default values uh, as the, um, package authors did. So for frequency, the, the, um, the function defaults to 0 0.01. I wasn't sure about the min or max. Um, so I just left it kind of small because you can go up by a, um, a tenth. Um, I put in the four choices for fractal as radio buttons, two more slider inputs for lacunarity and gain. Um, again, also putting in random maximums just based on the increments that are used in the examples. Um, and then you can see this bookmark button. I can run the app, but technically I don't really need this because I've included this chunk. I've included this chunk, sorry, these chunks. I've included them so that it updates automatically, but I'm going to comment them out so you can see with and without. So if I'm at, leave the bookmark button and the obviously the function and I have enabled bookmark King equals URL and here it is. Okay, some noise and I can change the frequency and it changes also. I'm not sure how to interpret this to be quite honest, but if I click bookmark button, then it brings up this nice little modular thing um, uh, with the URL itself. And so then I can store this. I can't share it, obviously, because this is running on my own local machine. Um, and then it's telling me to press command uh, C to copy. And then I can dismiss the thing, make it go away. Or I can go back here and stop the application and and see. Um, put this back on the, uh, the observer and the on bookmarked uh, function, which um, I, I don't remember if I mentioned this or not. This function um, essentially updates the query string. So remember how I said that do bookmark is a callback, uh, invokes a callback function, which is on bookmark. So this is, it invokes it, the, the observer, uh, it invokes it when the input changes and then here's the actual call to on bookmarked. And um, this takes update query string, um, which is uh, the URL. So I can have this, but I really, and I, I don't need this, but I could keep it. So if I were to run the application again, I don't know why it keeps, I guess because I have the app and I have the book down running. Um, I could change this, but notice the notice the um, URL up here. 
you see how now it has the, um, it had them before, but like now that when I change it, notice how frequency changes. You see, now it's set to 0.6. Nothing else has changed, but I could still have this. Actually, I guess I can't. Mm. I should have tried that out. I guess this uh, having the observer and the callback function renders the bookmark button no. Um, hmm. I wonder why you can't have both. Anyways, it's not necessary. That was the moral of the story. And I could comment that out just because really it doesn't do anything as we just discovered. And um, did I just modify? No, it just ran the, uh, the book down and I hit save. Um, anyways, so th my, the moral of the story was that I can, sorry, I can have the, uh, both either the button to have a user manually generate a URL to share, or I can have the URL update itself um, by including an observer. Um, Now, let me go back to the book, wherever it went. Here it is. Okay, so where was I? Updating the URL. So there may be an instance where you have a complex application and you have a lot of input that needs to get modified. And like I was mentioning earlier, when I we were breaking down the URL, that there's a potential for that URL to get quite long. And that is not pretty. So um, that URL stores way too much information. You probably are just like, why can't we just have something simpler? And you can't. So essentially by changing that argument, um, enable bookmarking to equal server, you're essentially um, storing the state of your application on the server side instead of on the UI. So it takes all the, the state of your application and stores it into a directory. So a directory is created when you, when you enable the server side um, um, bookmarking, it creates a, a, direct, direct, a new directory in your working directory um, called shiny bookmarks and every new state gets a subdirectory created. So in our, it, the, it saves all of your information, all the input values as an R data set and creates a new subdirectory within your server um, and then produces and then generates a new URL um, that looks like this. It essentially is obviously the protocol and the location stays the same. But now, instead of having all your inputs, all the values, all your parameters attached to the end of your URL, you have your state ID. And this corresponds to uh, this unique number that corresponds to the directory that contains the R data set of the, current, of the, of the state of the application. There are some downfalls uh, with using this particular approach, which is that you can really use up a lot of disk space if you don't have a mechanism in place to routinely delete these directories. I mean, unless, I don't know, you don't have, I can't, I mean, I'm thinking out loud, you don't really have, um, yeah, it just doesn't make any, there isn't really a case to store every possible value of your, in, of all your inputs, because why would you be using a this the server side storing the um, bookmarking on the server side for uh, unless you had a complex uh, application or it had a lot of input it doesn't make any sense to uh, just let these directories pile up right so this could cause your application to start to lag if you are just using a lot of disk space having you know 
potentially infinite number of not not infinite, but a very large non-infinite number <laughs> of direct subdirectories. Um, so make sure that you have you keep this in mind, and also when you do delete these files um, in your on your server, be mindful like who you've shared them with, because when you delete that subdirectory, the URL that you've shared is no longer going to work because it's not going to find training is not going to find the app, that directory anymore on the server. So it, it's kind of like a a give and take, right? You have the ability to store the state of your application on the server. However, you could potentially run, run into issues when you, it generally, I mean, it, it generates a large number of directories and you don't do some housekeeping. Um, but then when you do, just be sure that uh, your URLs are still active, that whomever you share them with, um, you don't delete those directories. So. You take, you give some and you take some. Okay. okay. Um, and that's about it. That's the chunk of, of bookmarking. Um, there are some challenges as, as we've discussed. Um, be extra cautious uh, when your app relies on random number generation. That's one thing to be mindful of because the application is not going to store the state. It can't store the state of um, uh, the random generate the, the function that creates the random num the random data, right? It's going to it's going to store whatever input you pass to that function, but whatever not whatever data that function returns, it can't reproduce. So be sure to include something like set seed or what was suggested in the book was a function called repeatable. And basically, that is what. It, I had just described, it's a, it's a wrapper around um, a random data function that uh, sets a default seed. You can set the seed yourself, but repeatable has some default for the seed. And that way your users can always um, reproduce the same results when random data is generated in your application. So for example, you can do repeatable uh, wrapped around the R norm, right, function. Um, if you're going to use tab set panel in your application, be sure to include IDs, to give your tabs IDs. Um, I know this is not always required. I do this just out of habit. But if you're going to use bookmarking, make sure you give them IDs because this is how Shiny is going to be able to store which tab was selected in the state. Um, be cautious of what you share. So if your user has to require, has to input something like um, a patient's name or a patient's date of birth, right? You're working with sensitive data um, into your application to retrieve, um, to do some kind of function to retrieve certain information from the application. Um, that's not something that you just want to share in your URL and put out there that could potentially, that one that's a major HIPAA violation. Um, so set bookmark exclude uh, will prevent certain um, inputs to, from being stored. So just put set bookmark exclude somewhere in your server and specify which input IDs are to be excluded from your from the URL, and that that's really all all there is to it. So set bookmark exclude. Um, see uh, patient name, patient DOB, and then that won't be included in the URL. Those will get reset. Um, and then if you use reactive values to manually manage your reactive state, instead of using on bookmarked. As I've shown in my example application, use on bookmark. Um, this has something to do with what we're going to discuss, I think, in the next section, which is reactive graph um, and advanced. And then there's more details on this in advanced bookmarking. There's an article published by our studio on advanced bookmarking. Um, but that's it. That's all there is to bookmarking. So. If anyone has any questions.
Brilliant. I think I think Federica's got a question. Yeah, yes. Um, just to um, to understand the the bookmarking function is for so I can set any URL I like. I want basically, or it's not necessarily for my app uh, URL. When I when I said the um, I'm not sure I understand. The... Okay. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Okay. Uh, when I set the URL in the bookmark uh, function, this URL is not necessarily the URL of my app. Can be any any URL I want. Just I want to show uh, in my app uh, like a sort of URL, and I, I do bookmark uh, the the URL uh, address. So the URL uh, and it, it is going to show up mm -hmm. using the bookmark function, basically. Because I didn't uh, really, uh, uh, I don't know if you can hear me because the, so the it, sound is delaying. It is going to... I can I hear cannot you. hear. I can hear you. Um, I, I think I understand your question. So um, your, the URL is going to be the URL of your application. It's just going to include a now extra information um, for your inputs. So like if you had, um, let's say the URL of your shiny application, dp uh, colon backslash backslash uh, myapp.com, then it's now going to include another backslash with um, the uh, parameters. So it's gonna have the inputs Ampersand yeah. input one. Yes, yes. Ampersand input uh, I, two. I, ampersand input three. I understand. Three. It's just going to yes, include sir. this extra information. Okay, this this is clear. Okay, but why I should um, uh, have a, a link with the URL of my app? Um, I think I'm misunderstanding the question. Is it? <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, I, well, I, that's think I, I think there's a lot <laughs> that's causing me to misunderstand this. Uh, yeah. this I think question. we'll maybe discuss it in the, the Slack channel or something, because I, I, I'm not entirely <laughs> sure either. Um, anyway. OK, that's fine. That, <laughs> sorry. Um, <laughs> Okay, uh, is, does anyone else have any questions? Um, who else is in the room? Um, uh, Robert was talking about the potential for using the um, URL, um, the, the kind of expanded URL to set up a, um, a, a state for testing your app. Uh, I don't know whether you have any kind of... Yeah, that's a really good point. Yeah. Um, I was just wondering whether there might be other kind of applications similar to testing that, or, or maybe, you know, beyond testing that might be uh, also benefited from the URLs. Uh, sorry, uh, I drifted off. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I just I'm wonder if... Oh, thanks. I just wonder if bookmarking would also work with shiny test, <clears throat> um, which is the, basically it's the test that version of shiny that essentially ends up taking screenshots and ensuring that the screenshot looks the same. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I mean the parameters simply because, you know, generally when you set up an app, you, you give it any number of parameters, but the ones that, 
say are causing you all the problems may not be your uh, the standard ones for the most part. So to be able to have it just pull those straight up, um, I think would really speed up uh, getting the app to fail when you expect it to. Hmm. If that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Uh, maybe I was thinking of, uh, I'm not sure because I didn't, uh, may, maybe you want to link another app or something that needs to be updated uh, to your app. So then you want to uh, link this uh, URL, which is updating by itself with the extra function, with the extra chunk that you add in the in the server but if i link my my app the same app i don't understand the because you have it uh, on top of the app when you so the url stays there so why do you need a link with a url of your app oh this is, it's, this is it's because so generally when you set up an app, you give it like uh, basic parameters. And a lot of times you'll have like a drop down that it'll be like, uh, you know, uh, say like US states and it'll give you a list of all the US states. But, um, but say your friend Jim only wants to see the results for Arizona. So you would send them the link with the bookmark that already has Arizona selected. So that then the entire, the entire app would be populated with the Arizona data rather than forcing them to go in and make selections themselves. Okay. Okay. Um, yeah, then, and now that's a bit, um, I, I need to think about that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, mean so I, think it, I think it makes more sense when you think about having, you know, five or eight or 10 different parameters that can be chosen. Um, and so, you know, you say, oh, God, you know, look at this cool thing. Um, and if you're not screen sharing, uh, you know, the, the other person you're talking to probably doesn't have that option unless you then, you know, take a screenshot. But depending on what's going on in that app, whether you have Plotly or whether, you know, there are other things you can drill down into in that. Um, I think it can be very, very difficult to guide a second person to the same place in an app as you were. Um, simply because you can tell them select X, you know, select these 10 things. Um, and if they just select one differently from what you expected them to, um, you may get a very different representation. Okay, that, so it's when it's like when you are doing things very complicated, so, and then you want to you you may want to your user select just a part of the uh, of the app, which is a request from the user, like sort of uh, as you said, uh, some states, some some parameters, some specific parameters, and they will automatically generate a URL of the of that screenshot of the app. Right, and so rather than a screenshot, it'll actually take you to the app in that particular state. It's kind of like if you think about an academic paper, you know, we put all of these things, you know, nowadays, if you had a shiny app, you would basically take a screenshot and put it into your appendix, rather than saying like, here is the, here's the shiny app, you know, if you wanna see this, you know, select this, this, and this, you could just put the link into, into the appendix, someone could click on the link and then be taken directly to that um, directly to that page so they could see it rather than rather than having to go through the manual process of finding exactly what you're looking at. It's kind of the easy way to give directions. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Also just play around with uh, if you have an application already uh, without bookmarking and just notice like the URL of the application and then, you know, try and click on it after you've refreshed it or after you've or sent it. It's not going to be in the same, it's, it's going to go back to the original state it was. And that gets, trust me, that can get very frustrating 
when you want to show somebody um, a specific example in your application, right? Unless you give them very detailed instructions. So it's like this a sort of a permanent perman link that you can take with, uh, take away for after having selected some parameters in the app, basically. Right, right. Yep. Cool, right. Um, anyway, um, we're we're hitting up against time, so uh, I probably ought to to wrap up the the, the session. Um, yeah, thanks, Layla, for 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 taking us through that chapter. Um, uh, yeah, no, that was brilliant. Um, sorry, you, you did drift in and out at points during the uh, the the talk, but yeah, it was really good. Thanks a lot. Um, yes, so next week uh, we yeah, have we have. Who is it again? I can't remember. We're, we're doing the uploads and downloads chapter, which I think is chapter nine of the book. Um, yeah. Uh, I look forward to seeing you all there. <laughs> okay. Well, I'm going to have to head off. Then. Right. Thanks all for Thank attending and thanks, Layla, again. Bye, everybody. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye. bye. Thank you, Layla. Bye. Thank you.